it's my pleasure to be here today to discuss one of the most transforming shift in finance, uh, building a regulated Web3 financial ecosystem that bridges the world of decentralized finance and traditional finance. So I think this shift is uh, reshaping the financial services, offering a more inclusive and efficient alternative to traditional finance structures. Yeah. Uh, first, let's take a recap of the internet revolution. Uh, in the early days of Web 1, uh, the internet was primarily static. Users could consume information, but interaction was minimum. As Web 2 emerged, we saw greater user interaction and content creation. However, this evolution came at a price. Data privacy and owners, ownership were often compromised. With tech gens controlling and uh, monetizing user information. Uh, Web3 is a fundamental departure from this model. It allows users not to not only read and write, but also to own and control their data through decentralized technology. By em enabling true ownership, um, Web3 aligns with core values such as transparency, decentralization, security, and most importantly, user empowerment. Uh, so in this model, uh, individuals and companies alike can access a trustless system where data integration, uh, with data integrity, is preserved through consensus mechanisms. So traditional finance, or TriFi, has undoubtedly shaped our economy landscape, but it's a system not without flaws. Let's take cross-border payments as an example. In traditional finance, these transactions were not only costly, but can take several days to settle. Consider that the average fee for cross-border transaction is around, I think, around $44 and in some cases, even higher. Another limitation is in security segments where the normally T plus one or T plus two periods delay liquidity and uh, create counterparty risks. In contrast, DeFi operates on a different paradigm. Transactions are often settled in real time without intermediaries and with minimum transaction cost. This ought not only save time, but also to make the system more transparent and accessible. The decentralized nature of DeFi allows for automation through smart contracts, which further eliminates the need for intermediaries. These features make DeFi a compelling alternative to traditional finance services, especially in markets where access to banking is limited. Within DeFi, there are few key sectors that have been rapid innovation and adoption. So let's go through with this briefly. Um, but lending and borrowing um, platforms, platforms like Avi and Compound enable decentralized lending and borrowing, right? So users can earn yields on assets. Uh, I think everyone is very, quite familiar with that, so I'm not going to elaborate on that. And uh, about, sta about liquid staking, so people can earn yield on their staked assets while also retain liquidity. This can be used in other DeFi applications. And uh, I think this provides a greater flexibility for stakers and contributes to network security. About the DEX, DEX like Uniswap or SushiSwap are reshaping the trending landscape by allowing this peer-to-peer -peer asset swap directly on-chain. And uh, these exchanges offer transparent, 
permissionless access and I have contributed significantly to the growing trust in DeFi. Uh, last, last but not least, stable coins. I think they serve as a gateway for many users into DeFi, right? Packed to real-world assets, they offer a bridge between fiat and the cryptocurrency, providing stability in the uh, kind of volatile crypto markets. And uh, major stable coins like USDT, USDC, and DAI have seen expo exponential growth in these days. And uh, these core sectors and now attracting users worldwide as evidences by metrics like DAX slash ZAX trading volume ratio, which you can see it went to up to 14.1% nowadays. Uh, I think it's a new high this year. The demand for more decentralized financial services continues to grow as users become increasingly comfortable with the DeFi model. So, as DeFi matures, institutions are looking at the ways to enter this place. One of the most promising areas here is uh, tokenization of the real world assets. And uh, this market alone could be a multi trillion dollar opportunity, allowing for fractional ownership and uh, border access to assets that were traditionally out of reach for retail investors. Uh, however, for institutions to engage fully, uh, compliance is not negotiable. This is where permission DeFi comes in, a framework that allows institutions to participate while adhering to regulatory requirements like a QIC and AML. By creating a hybrid model that integrates DeFi's benefits with TriFi's compliance, we can pave the way for safer, more secure participation in decentralized market. Chainlink has been instrumental in bridging the gap between TriFi and DeFi. Um, their technologies like Chainlink CCIP, proof of reserves, and market data feeds provide essential infrastructure that brings trust and transparency to decentralize the market. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I, I'll skip uh, the more technical details of this part. But uh, uh, worth mentioning, Chainlink solutions are pivotal in supporting the liquidi liquidity, security, and transparency. I think this all will drive DeFi's future growth. As we continue to expand our support for the DeFi, here are some emerging trends that we believe are crucial for sustainable and safe development of DeFi. First, given the increasing number of stable coin, uh, blockchains, uh, liquidity fragmentation is a common challenge that makes it, e that makes it hard, hard even for crypto native users. So having an intent-centric infrastructure where users can determine their intended outcome, oblivious to the underlying process taken in the back end, will greatly improve the interoperability between chains. And uh, I think I bring unify, unify liquidity and uh, improve the user experience. Second, after mul multiple iterations and market cycles, the growing maturity of the blockchain technology is permitted to share in greater institutional adoption. This year, we saw several reputable institutions making headways into DeFi. I think 
uh, exa one example uh, which I believe everyone here is aware of that Black, Black, BlackRock build fund on Ethereum. I think Visa also announced plans to create a platform for banks to issue fiat back, uh, fiat backend tokens. And uh, with the increasing use of blockchain technology for RWA in the area of tokenization, we could see more DeFi activity supporting RWA backend tokens that are liquid and complete. Uh, the, I think the rise of the ERC 3643, uh, for example, allows the participants to manage and enforce compliance, coupled with other developments like Solana token extensions, uh, positive steps to manage variable RWA tokens. So it's important to note that for the whole Web3 industry to flourish, partnerships with regulators to keep risk at bay and protect our users are very crucial. Uh, Hashkey Capital has been committed to this journey since our founding in 2018. Today we have invested in over six startups across DeFi infrastructures and, a key, and other key areas. Um, we are very proud to offer regulated solutions in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Tokyo which allows us to serve as a bridge between traditional finance and Web3 finance. Um, so as we move forward, the line between DeFi and TriFi will continue to blur. We are on the verge of a more inclusive and uh, efficient financial future, one where technology serves as a backbone of the financial empowerment. So to all of you today, I encourage you to explore these innovations, support decentralized finance, and contribute to build a more transparent, accessible, and uh, equitable financial system. Together we can unlock the true power of Web3 Finance. Thank you.